Hey people, it is Tuesday, October the 19th, which is my mom's birthday. And the time is 12 o'clock in the afternoon. And the temperature is currently 16 degrees Celsius. And I'm here at Cherry Street, where it passes under Lakeshore Boulevard and the Gardner Expressway. Or crosses Lakeshore Boulevard, I should say, and passes under the Gardner Expressway. And there is an awesome view of the skyline. So I thought I'd walk through some of these rapidly developing neighborhoods on the east end of downtown. I did a walk along the East Bay front before I started this video. Now I thought I'd take a walk over here through the Canary District. And I'll continue on through some other East End neighborhoods. You can see this is a pretty kind of rough looking area in terms of like it's sort of concrete wasteland, industrial, post-industrial, elevated freeway landscape. But things will get a lot nicer looking as soon as we move away from the uh, lakefront area. That end of the lakefront is still in the in the throes of being redeveloped from a former industrial land to a new residential community. go things look a lot nicer already there's a streetcar loop the 504 King and these new towers are part of the Canary district Last time I came through here, these were nowhere near this tall. And across the street is the distillery district. There's a peek into the distillery. I've done a number of walks through that area before. And we'll probably do another one again soon. I like to combine my distillery district walks with walks along the Esplanade, which is also a very, very beautiful street to walk along and they sort of go together in my opinion. So this is a new neighborhood, 
which has sprung up within the last five years or so. It was initially opened in 2015 with the Pan Am Games and it served as the Athletes Village. But after the games, those buildings were opened up to the public and are now used as apartments and condominiums. And since then, there have been many new buildings and the area is a work in progress. It's continually evolving. Most of the buildings here tend to be more of the mid-rise variety as opposed to very tall skyscraping condo towers. And there's always new retail popping up at the base of these buildings. At first it was pretty devoid of retail, but that's been slowly changing over the last few years. Now there's a fair amount of restaurants and other retail stores. Rolling Mills Road. We were just on Mill Street. Let's go over here. I think Front Street is the main street that runs through the Canary District. Front Street. I'm not sure where this music is coming from. Oh, it's coming from this car. He needs to blast his music at full volume with his windows down. So I'll just try to keep talking until he passes by. I find that quite obnoxious, but hey, some people seem to enjoy it, I guess. I'm not sure why exactly they would enjoy that. You can see the financial district and the CN Tower. And you can see some of the retail here. Bar Burrito. Copper Branch plant-based power food. And here we have some public art. Mm, 
Let's check out some of the older buildings that are still remaining in this area. I believe these ones were slated to be redeveloped, but some residents wanted them to be preserved, so they fought the redevelopment and the buildings are still standing. So I don't think this original proposal will go through as planned. So this just loops back around. I'm not sure if I can get out of here this way. Let's find out. I would say most likely. It's bound to be a path or something. And it looks like I was right. Well, there's another new retail establishment here that's new to me, Aisle 24 Market. I quite like these new buildings here. As long as they can keep the black cladding nice and shiny. And this one is also very, very interesting. Here's the other side of those historic buildings. Let's check out some of the signs they put here. They were trying to save the buildings. Right, the foundry, that's what this was called. I was trying to remember. Save the foundry, save history. And I guess their efforts did pay off because pretty sure the buildings will be preserved. I think they were planned to be somewhat preserved with the proposal as it was. If that rendering is of the proposal saved, I guess that's, okay, that is the new rendering. I guess the previous rendering had the buildings demolished or facademized, as I like to call it, where they tear down most of the building and just leave a facade. So it looks like the buildings will be preserved in their entirety as part of this new development.
And over here is Underpass Park. Maybe I'll go over and take a closer look at that. That gorilla has a, a banana phone. That's right, not an apple phone, a banana phone. <laughs> Looks like the younger one is jealously or eagerly awaiting his turn. <laughs> This is a popular place for skateboarders. There are some skate park facilities over here. And a couple of basketball courts. And an excited dog. I don't think I've ever walked along this particular street before. Kind of have a neat view of the CN Tower from here. Trolley Crescent is the name of this street. Here's St. Lawrence Street. Let's see where Trolley Crescent will take us. Probably take us back out onto King Street. So we're basically coming into the Corktown neighborhood now. Or maybe it dead ends here. Looks like I can get out. Or can I? <laughs> well, this is definitely a new area for me. From here it looks like a dead end, but sometimes there are little pathways that you can't see until you get right up close. And it looks like I gambled and I lost. There's a gate there, but... I don't want to open that gate. I'm not sure if that's meant for anyone or just people who actually live there. Well, we got to look at this little area anyway. Definitely someplace I've never covered before in any of my videos.
I'm not a fan of backtracking areas I've already covered, but sometimes you don't have any choice in the matter. There's a beautiful dog. I wonder if there was a no exit sign here that I just failed to notice. Because that would have been helpful. And there isn't one. Oh, wait a sec. Nope. There is no sign, no such sign. Alright, so now this is St. Lawrence Street. Which, curiously enough, is not in the St. Lawrence neighborhood. That lies to the west of here. So now here is King Street East. And as you can see, we are in the Coketown neighborhood. We are also in Old Town, Toronto. Coketown is a sub neighborhood within Old Town, Toronto. I wonder how old these are. They kind of look like they could be old, but at the same time, they look like they could not be that old. Bay Cat Hospital and Bay Dog Hospital. And over here we have some kitty cats. Now, where are the dogs?
time I walk past here, I always have to mention that this is the building they used as the police station in the sci-fi TV series Orphan Black. And I always get a kick out of this little alleyway here, a virgin place. <laughs> It's not much to look at, really. <laughs> You'd think with a name like that, there'd be a little something more to it. King Street sort of veers to the right over here, so you get this cool effect of seeing the towers of the financial district sort of kind of showing up at an angle to the rest of the streetscape. Here's another neat little alley named Gilead. Wonder if that is where the name Gilead in the Handmaid's Tale came from. I wonder if Margaret Atwood, who lives in Toronto, saw that street name or alleyway name and thought that would be a good name for her fictional dystopian land Little Trinity Church. I think this might be the oldest church in Toronto here. Yep, founded in 1842. This is the oldest surviving church in the city of Toronto. So that's pretty cool. They don't call this area Old Town for nothing. Little Trinity House. I imagine this probably dates from the same time as the church.
here's Parliament Street. So I think I'll head north here on Parliament because in my last live stream I actually walked along King Street from this point westward. So if you'd like to see what that looks like, just check out my recent live stream and you'll see what that whole stretch of King Street is like heading in that direction. And instead, I will walk along Adelaide Street. It's kind of an unusual building here. Alumni Theatre Company, established 1918. Here's another funny name for a laneway, Pompadour Lane. It's not much of a laneway though. And here's another new development. Ontario Street. Most of these buildings are new additions here. 
Adelaide Street is being transformed really from its west end to the east end with new residential buildings. Here's Princess Street, which is the name of the street I lived on when I was growing up in North Bay. Shoeborn Street, so I'm going to take a turn to the north now. <laughs> okay, I'll try my best. So this is the southern end of Sherborne Street, which is just a typical sort of downtown street, but further up, once you cross Queen Street, it does take on that more sketchy nature that everyone seems to think about when they hear Sherborne Street. But I recently did a walk through that area, so I won't do that again right now. So I'll probably be wrapping up the video here. As we're approaching Richmond Street. So I hope you enjoyed the walk. Kind of wandering all around really, starting from Cherry Street and walking through the Canary District. And then taking a few wrong turns and having to backtrack and heading through Corktown along King Street. And up here to approaching Queen and Sherborne, the infamous Queen and Sherborne, just right up ahead. So leave a comment below and like and share and subscribe if you haven't already. And make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. And if you'd like to support the channel, there are links in the description where you can do so via PayPal and via my merch store. And you can also find me on Instagram under K Continuum. So thanks for watching. And be sure to keep checking back because as always, I will continue. <laughs>